What if I told you that you can now buy a robot wife for less than the price of a new iPhone? She will not only talk to you, but will caress your hair and even sleep with you. But before we dive deep into this digital love triangle between China and Japan, smash that subscribe button and I might just put two of them head to head to see who breaks up with me first. The showdown begins. So here's the setup. For years, Japan has been the world's quiet powerhouse when it comes to humanoid robots, the kind that look, move, and even feel human. They've been building emotional androids since before most people even had smartphones. We're talking robots that smile at you, blink naturally, and say things like, welcome home, in a tone that makes your brain glitch for a second. But lately, a new challenger has entered the ring China, and they're not playing around. They've taken Japan's decade-long head start, hit fast forward, and added their secret weapon, price. See, Japan's robots are jaw-dropping but also bank-breaking. Meanwhile, China is saying, you want one, two grand, and it's yours. That's what makes this so fascinating. Japan treats robotics like fine art. Every movement, every expression tuned with obsessive precision, their robots are meant to connect. China, they're treating it like a business opportunity. They don't want just a few robots in luxury labs, they want them in living rooms, offices, maybe even dating apps. And that's where the robot wife showdown begins. On one side, Japan's graceful, almost poetic approach chasing emotional realism. On the other, China's industrial sprint chasing accessibility and scale. Two philosophies, one goal, creating machines that don't just serve people, but simulate love, friendship, and maybe even affection. So today, we're stepping right into that battle zone. A weird, fascinating world, where romance, AI, and economics collide. Japan builds robots to be admired, China builds robots to be owned. And somewhere between the two, the future of human connection is quietly getting rewritten. Japan's dream, robots that feel human. If there's one thing Japan absolutely nails, it's turning machines into experiences. Their robots aren't cold chunks of metal. They're performers, hosts, companions, each one built with a little bit of soul, or at least the illusion of it. Take HRP-4C, affectionately known as MIM. She's not your standard lab bot, she's basically a fashion model with circuitry. Standing about five feet tall, she's strutted down runways, posed for cameras, and even performed pop songs in front of live audiences. Her movements are fluid, her expressions subtle, and the first time you see her blink, it feels unsettlingly normal. She's powered by over 300 tiny motors that control everything from her eyes to her waist. It's like watching choreography powered by code. Then there's Chihiro, Japan's digital extrovert. Her creators didn't just want her to respond, they wanted her to engage. So she learns your tone, picks up your humor, and even pushes conversations forward like an actual friend would. She pauses before answering, nods while listening, and occasionally throws in a laugh that feels surprisingly genuine. Talking to her feels less like using a gadget and more like chatting with someone who just happens to charge through a wall socket. And let's not forget, Sia, the emotional receptionist. She's designed for workplaces and hotels, but she's got more empathy programmed into her than some managers I've met. She reads your mood, adjusts her expressions, and greets you with warmth that feels intentional. It's customer service too. That's the heart of Japan's robotics dream, not just machines that perform tasks, but machines that perform emotion, robots that can comfort the lonely, guide the lost, or simply make you feel seen. Japan isn't just coding AI, they're trying to engineer empathy. It's both poetic and a little eerie, because when a robot smiles like it means it, you start to wonder how far we really are from calling that love. China's counter move, affordable AI companions, now, while Japan was busy crafting robots that could steal the show, China was quietly planning to steal the market. They saw the gap Japan's robots were incredible, but totally out of reach for most people. So, China's engineers asked a simple question. What if you could build one that looks 90% as real, for 1% of the price? That's where X-Robots comes in. Based in Shandong, this company is cranking out humanoids that look like they belong in a sci-fi film, but they're not props. Their silicone faces move with uncanny precision, their eyes follow you as you talk, and their lips sync perfectly to speech. The craziest part? Their price tags start around $1,999. These robots can smile, talk, and respond using a built-in conversational AI that learns your habits over time. Basically, it's like ChatGPT with a face that can blush. And China isn't stopping there. Another player, Unitry Robotics, is focusing on the body humanoid frames that can balance, walk, and even dance. Their Unitry H1 model is proof of how far China's hardware has come strong, stable, and shockingly human in motion. It's not marketed as a companion robot yet, but give it another year, 
and it probably will be. But here's the kicker. While Japan's robots are hand-tuned by experts, China's are being built at scale, factories, not workshops. Their mindset isn't make it perfect, it's make it available. They're democratizing humanoid robots the same way they made smartphones and electric cars cheaper. So while Japan's building robots that can walk on stage, China's building robots that can walk into your home. One side is chasing authenticity, the other, accessibility. And honestly, both are rewriting the rules of what companionship means in the 21st century. Personality versus price, who feels more real? Here's the thing, it's easy to say Japan makes better robots. But what does better even mean when both countries are out here building androids that can literally flirt? Japan's robots might move smoother and read your tone better, but China's catching up fast and at one-tenth the price. See, Japan's Chihiro or Sia might be packed with subtle emotional AI, where every blink and eyebrow raise feels deliberate. Talk to one for a few minutes and you might start thinking she actually gets you. But China's bots? They're built to be there. They might not have Shakespearean-level conversation skills yet, but they'll smile, remember your favorite takeout order, and hold a chat without breaking down or breaking your bank. It's like comparing a luxury watch to a smartwatch. Japan's giving you craftsmanship, something beautiful, precise, and emotionally layered. China's giving you practicality, something that does the job, looks good doing it, and doesn't make your wallet cry. But here's the plot twist. China's AI is learning faster. Every new model is smarter, cheaper, and creepily more lifelike. Their bots might not have the same emotional depth yet, but they're evolving faster than Japan's perfectionist pace can keep up with. So who wins? It depends. If you want a robot that feels like art, Japan's your pick. But if you just want a companion who talks, listens, and charges via USB-C, China's already got your back. It's heart versus hustle, and both sides are playing for keeps. The tech behind the charm. Now, let's peel back the curtain and see what's actually going on under all that fake skin. Because, let's be real, behind every cute robot wink is a mountain of code and machinery working harder than your phone on 2% battery. Japan's approach is classic hardware first, soul later. Their robots run on complex motion systems, hundreds of micro-motors, and facial actuators fine-tuned to mimic natural human tics. Every blink, every lip curl, every slight turn of the head is programmed to feel spontaneous. That's why when Mim walks a runway, it doesn't look mechanical, it looks like she's aware of herself. Meanwhile, China's flipping the game. Their hardware is getting simpler, more modular, and their magic comes from AI software smarter conversational models that learn, adapt, and update through the cloud. You don't have to reprogram your bot, it just gets smarter overnight. Think of it as downloading empathy like an app. Japan's robots look human because of engineering. China's robots act human because of data. And that's where the real difference lies. Also, fun fact, Japan's robots usually speak in polite, calm tones. China's newer bots? Some of them are being trained on regional dialects and even slang. Imagine your robot saying, bro, you look tired, with perfect timing, equal parts comforting and mildly unsettling. So, under all the metal, circuits, and silicone, it's not really about who has more wires. It's about who's giving their robots a mindset. Japan builds them to express emotion. China builds them to learn emotion. Either way, the line between programming and personality is getting thinner by the day. Ethics, emotions, and the creepy valley. All right, let's address the big question, the one everyone's quietly thinking but no one wants to say out loud. Is this cool or just kind of creepy? Because sure, it's fun to joke about robot wives, but when a machine starts remembering your routines, learning your emotions, and complimenting your haircut, that's where things start to get weirdly personal. Japan's been wrestling with this for years. Their society has long been open to robotic companions, caretakers for the elderly, customer service bots, even android idols. They treat them as part of culture, not competition. There's respect, even affection. China, on the other hand, is moving faster, and that speed raises eyebrows. When emotional companionship becomes a product, it's easy to forget where empathy ends and programming begins. If your robot always agrees with you, never gets tired, and never argues, is that love or just really effective customer service? Psychologists call this the uncanny valley, that uncomfortable zone where robots look too human, but not quite human enough. Your brain gets confused. You know it's fake, but your emotions don't. And that's the wild part. The emotional response is real, even if the relationship isn't. Both Japan and China are skating on that edge. Japan romanticizes it. China normalizes it. 
and the rest of us are left wondering what happens when emotional technology stops being a novelty and starts becoming a habit. Because once your robot remembers your birthday, tells you it missed you, and sounds like it means it well, the future stops feeling like sci-fi and starts feeling uncomfortably close. Final verdict, the $1,999. Question, so after all this, who's really winning the robot wife showdown China or Japan? Honestly, it's not that simple. Japan has the experience, the artistry, and the emotional sophistication. Their robots are like poetry wrapped in metal designed to make you feel. But China's got momentum, affordability, and scale. They're not waiting for the future, they're mass producing it. Japan's bots belong in exhibitions, high-end labs, and maybe the homes of collectors. China's bots, they're about to show up in apartments, cafes, maybe even your next video call. And that's the thing Japan is defining what robots could be. China's deciding what robots will be. The $1,999. The price tag isn't just a number, it's a statement. It says, you don't need to dream about the future anymore, you can buy it. And as weird as that sounds, it's kind of the truth. So maybe the real winner here isn't about who builds the perfect robot wife. It's about who changes how we see relationships in a world that's becoming more digital every day. Japan gives you heart. China gives you access. One builds intimacy. The other builds availability. Together, they're reshaping the idea of connection itself. And if that sounds wild now, give it a few years. Because the next time you hear someone say they're in a relationship, you might have to ask, with who? or what.